Are your players hiding from scary ideas? Are they saying, oh, we have to have a safe place where we can game? Jerry Seinfeld did an interview where he says college students don't know what the hell they're talking about because they're just too politically correct. They don't understand racism or sexism. So are the young generation just becoming so hypersensitive to everything? Then there was even in the New York Times, there was a there was an article called in college and hiding from scary ideas. And you, you read this article about how we have to have safe places where they create put took went in there and put play doh so that they could play with it and re relax and get away from scary ideas like rape or someone challenging them or making them think. And one of the things I always enjoy, the best games I've had in, in playing Dungeons and Dragons are where the players think. If your players don't have any imagination, are terrified to take a step out and investigate something different, if, oh, we only fight orcs and we only kill them if they don't beg for mercy, and so on. Okay, so you're just going through the motions of rolling dice. The reason that Tolkien took off when he went, the Lord of the Rings, was here was a story that you had evil, you had uh, someone trying to, to achieve something. It was, it stretched the imagination. That's what real fantasy and what real science fiction is about. It makes you think, it opens your eyes to new ideas. I remember when I first read Ringworld, the concept of this massive ring surrounding a star, and you think about what that means. And Larry Niven's done it to me twice. He did it with Ringworld and he did it with Integral Trees, and you think about Integral Trees. If you haven't read either one of them, I highly recommend them, but they make you think about possibilities. What are they like? You read some of, uh, you know, if you read Tolkien or the other one to, to take a look at, if you're not a sensitive person and can handle something, pick up Black Company by Glenn Cook. I highly recommend this book. This is, this is an awesome, awesome book. But the description is, I love the description of the book, is that, that it was uh, all the characters are homicidal maniacs. They're fascinating. The, he says, you know, he says the, the, the medic the, is called Croker because they, you know, and it, it, you, you, can, you can dig through this one. But it's a fascinating book where the characters are, are you run into some truly evil, evil characters. And I've heard Glenn Cook speak at some world science fiction conventions and he said that when he started the Black Company and he started some of his uh, other series, he wanted, the, uh, one of the ideas was he wanted to tell Lord of the Rings as told from the viewpoint of the orcs, which is a fascinating concept. But what happens is that these challenge your players because make them think outside the box. As a DM, you should think outside the box. You should be taking a look at challenging ideas, challenging the norm, making people think, give them puzzles. Don't hide from scary ideas. Make the, you know, he says, we're in a fantasy world. We can do whatever we like. So take some concept that, that's there and run with it. You know, it says that, oh, we can't have anybody be, we can't have rape. Okay, why? Because, oh, it might, somebody might trigger. That's this whole concept of a safe place. And I say, 
Stop hiding. Build some, toughen your skin. That's the whole thing. You're, we're seeing it that, that you can't have comedy, you can't have humor, you can't have uh, all, all this stuff. You're seeing comics are going away from colleges because people are too hypersensitive. They're, too, they're these little uh, fragile snowflakes. They can't have anybody challenging them. They can't have them thinking about what it means. I mean, as a DM, I did the one about, I, I thought I would do an interesting scenario. It, it didn't turn out the way I expected, but it was interesting, was I said, what, do you, what, would hap what do you feel about uh, pedophiles? I, Personally, I think we should all take them out and kill them. Okay, I have no sympathy for them. Uh, and I will say a phrase that comes from my grandmother. They should take them all out and nail their balls to a tree stump and push them over backwards. And that's, uh, that's, my, that's my standard and let them bleed to death. But the, what um, you see is people are so upset. So I put that in one of my adventures. I said, what happens if one of your party is accused of being a pedophile? And the way it happened is the party walked into town and the idea, what my plan was, that they would be shook down for money and made to force to do some things for penance and such. But the, anyway, it, it, like I said, it turned out wrong. What happens is you had some street urchins and you had a young boy who and it had either been maimed or was born that way. I never did clarify that. It didn't really matter because it didn't, there he says. And what they did is they got some blood, some chicken's blood or pig blood or whatever, and they spread it all over his genitals and then when the party walks out, this little boy runs out who looks maimed and looks bloody. And he goes, he did it to me. Now the characters are innocent. And these are, this is a shakedown. But what happens is the party freaks out and slaughters the children and <laughs> slaughters the city guards and anyway it did it was it was interesting but you challenge your players just because you know they walk into town and there you have your uh healer your cleric in your party is now up to fifth level and the cleric in the town the town healer is third now he's worried that you're taking over his congregation this is his congregation. This is his town. And you've come in and you're a higher level. You could take over because you, you're, you're a higher level cleric. So you could have whole terrible things. You can accuse your players uh, of having uh, uh, someone accuse them of doing things that they didn't do. They accuse them of, uh, yeah, that, that's the man that raped me. Well, did they rape them? No. Was there any sex involved? No, but it, just the acquisition, just the accusation. Which actually sounds like some of the things we saw at colleges where the someone cried rape and they tried to censor a entire fraternity and so on. And it came out that it wasn't probably true there was that they could prove that it wasn't true. So why can't you have false accusations made against your characters? Nothing actually happened, but they're just falsely accused. It adds conflict in your game and makes them, this is rather than, oh, we have to go and save the town from another monster or something like that, have them why do they go on these quests? Are your player characters so insipid that they only, you know, they're, uh, as you get older, you go, oh, the Lone Ranger only went out and never kissed the girl and so on. No, oh, come on. Let's, with this, if you're playing with, like I said, if you're playing with children, if you've got 
sub -te younger teens younger than the teenagers or you've got young, young teens okay play those type of games but if you're an adult if you're college level and, and i look at the demographics of the people who watch my channel and i'm going most of them in your 30s and 40s so come on play like adults stop hiding from scary ideas don't be be don't be afraid to add some adult topics in your game you don't actually have to go out and have your characters be raped i've done it i've had that in my campaign and i've mentioned that before i have raped both male and female characters as the the dm has had the player characters in my campaign have been raped and uh i've also killed them that's murder which is worse anyway okay we'll, we'll, we'll get about that i've had total party kills but are you afraid to kill your characters because that's a scary idea that someone could die a loved one could die i read that and i it sounded so insipid that you have to have such a uh, a safe place that we can't have anybody die you know come on characters can characters can die characters you know it says that's what makes the game interesting that there is a chance that your character could die that your something bad could happen to your character your character could have his arm bitten off okay we in dungeon the dragons you would heal and you could actually regrow the limb and there's a whole interesting weird dynamic to that but don't be afraid of adult themes you know it says i introduced I needed to explain how in my campaign someone uh, could survive underwater for a while. So I created a um, drug. It was called, it was that it, it, it gave you water breathing. That was one of its primary functions. It's like a potion of water breathing. But the question that I also had was why would a captive? who was willing to die, continue to take the drug. And I said, you just make it addictive. So the, I created Tharl, which is a drug. It's a, it's a substance you ingest. It grants you water breathing. This, is a, this was important, at least I thought it was going to be important, but of course the party went a different direction. But that, that you have something that will, that will give you water breathing. It has a downside that it's narcotic and that it's addictive. So that brings up an interesting question. If you have that, that's where, that's why The Witcher, if you've played the game The Witcher, these are interesting things because they talk about the drugs and the things that affect them. It's an adult topic. But, you know, in essence, few people always talk about the antidotes. One of the, the problems that if I do have a problem with uh, Game of Thrones was that you have uh, you, these poisons that don't have lasting side effects. And actually, most people, if you really know anything about poisons, poisons have side effects. The antidote may keep you alive, but it doesn't mean that it won't affect you if you're going to play that out but what happens is that side effects like i said the primary function of thoral is water breathing but it has some interesting side effects so it was there uh there was a wonderful next generation um uh episode on star trek next generation where uh, the the characters were dealing with drug dealers who were uh, who had, it, it originally cured a disease but it had a narcotic side effect so what happens is think about adding some of these topics in there so it's a little bit more complex don't run away don't hide from scary ideas embrace them they'll they'll m make your players think and the thing that I, I, I want you to go away with is think. As a DM, how can, you, how can you challenge your players to think? 
Give them challenges that you don't know how you're going to solve. I, I've done this quite frequently. I come up with a puzzle that I can't figure out how to solve. And then you listen to the players and you modify the, on the fly the, the, the challenge so that the players, some of the ideas that they come up with mm, sound good. And write down all the old, all the ones that, you know, they're there because that's where you keep your notes and you keep that for you so you can use that down the road. But what happens is that put in scary things into your game, not just scary monsters. I mean, honestly, I've only ever once had an adventure where it was true, where the players thought it was truly scary. And that was, we set up the mood and a bunch of weird things happened and it didn't turn out, the, the, the mood was great. The ending of the game didn't work out well. I tried playing um, uh, uh, Jason from Friday the 13th and the party freaked out. And uh, un unlike the movies where, oh, we all go off uh, one at a time and let the monster pick us off. No, they hunker down in bunker mentality. And, and anyway, but it, it didn't work out the way the movies work out because the players were much more intelligent than the characters in the movies. But it started off and it added ideas in there because you can add ideas, take some from Psycho. You have, you know, Mother, <laughs> Anthony Hopkins uh, dealing, or no, Anthony Perkins, I'm sorry, terrible, terrible me. But it's the, the scene in there where, where you have Mother and you can do things like that which were challenging and that was what Hitchcock did was he challenged his uh, uh, challenge your your viewers challenge your players give them something to think about make them take them out of their safe place where they they only do it you know the same rote things we roll the die we kill the monster there was an interesting artic an article in an old dungeon in an old uh, version of the the dragon magazine about creating random monsters because you know it says oh we see this creature so we yell chicklets and it dies and we know that you want to add something interesting and challenging into that so add some scary ideas get them out of the safe place put some topics in there that make them think make challenge their well-held beliefs whatever they are pick a new one you know it's uh if they're if your party is uh, if a lot of your players are vegetarian make them you can come up with something where you have to deal with carnivores or you, the only th way you're going to survive is by eating meat. Now this is taking them out of their safe place. Yes. Make them think. Make them be willing to question their own values, to question what they've been taught. That's what college should have told you is how to think, how to think critically. And we're seeing that that's not true. Colleges today are too politically correct. You can't bring up these topics, you can't challenge people. And the flack I've got on the last, the, the last couple of videos that I've done is, oh, but we could, I could never mention rape because it might trigger someone. And I go, no, get out of your safe place. This is what the, what, this is this article, I'll put the links down below about uh, in college, in hiding from scary ideas about how you had to have a safe place where all they could go and play with Play-Doh because it was just too challenging. And I'm going, you know, toughen up your hide. If you were a man, since I try and, I try and be polite, but it would be, to, the phrase would be to grow a pair if you're a man. I read Kipling's poem, if, uh, if, take a look at that, that if you haven't read that, and understand what it means to be an adult, being able to handle adult things. I worry about people who, are, who can be so triggered that, that you couldn't do that, because that means if they go out to vote and you have 
a uh, something, an initiative on the ballot about rape or something like that, they could have to run and hide in their safe place and not vote because they're, they're, there's a, that's on the ballot talking about rape or child molesting. You know, it's just, come on. You're a, if you're an adult, act like an adult, handle scary ideas, because that's what it means to be a, an adult, is to handle, to be able to act uh, and w deal with these scary concepts that being an adult is scary. Going out on your own is scary. Paying bills is scary. <laughs> Dealing with those type of things are scary. Losing your job is scary. And what happens is, uh, you know, deal with it. You have to, or, you know, the alternative is just to curl up and hide in your safe place where you, nothing, and the world passes you by. But then, you know, you miss all the pleasures of the world. You miss all the pleasures that things go on. So stop, stop hiding from scary ideas. Embrace them. Put them in your gaming and think. If you like my video, press the thumbs up button. I'd appreciate that. Or if uh, this interests you, you can always subscribe to my channel. There's a button right above. Uh, I look forward to hearing some comments. Tell me what you think about this and I'll uh, uh, try and reply and uh, we can see if I'll do some more of these. Thank you.